Hey, how's it going, guys? I have been looking to play a deck uh, that I've been having a lot of fun with and uh, just kind of share it with you guys. So it's called Alone and Angry. I'm not really uh, angry, but I am alone. The reason I called it Alone and Angry is because we are doing Singleton Warrior. So uh, every card in here, obviously, is alone. And uh, Warrior just, uh, I mean, Gortwog right here, he looks kind of angry, right? So we're just going to... We're going to go with that one. I figured it was a, a more fun name than uh, Singleton Warrior. So, um, this deck is basically trying to do... Um, it's trying to do a few things. Really what I want to do is get Knight Talon Lord and uh, Unstoppable Rage on the same turn. We've got a lot of targets for Rage uh, and a lot of ways to boost our Magicka. We could also get our um, Pure Blood Elder to do that. Uh, I'll go over everything, though. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, this is a Singleton deck. Um, Mute, I run as one of our one drops. Mute is, uh, it's a card, I don't really think it's fair, and maybe you guys can tell me in the, uh, in the comments section how you feel about Mute, but I really don't like Mute. I'm running it because Singleton kind of needs help along the way, but silencing two creatures for, um, for one Magicka, it's a little bit busted, I think. It's, it's kind of a crazy card. Um, Rapid Shot. Uh, deal one damage to a creature. If it survives, draw a card. Rapid Shot's awesome. I love Rapid Shot. It is such a good one-cost action. Um, one of my favorite cards in the game to just just play with. It feels really good. It can be optioned to kill a creature sometimes, and other times it's just like, oh, do a little bit of poke damage and uh, uh, draw a card. So it's huge value. Um, Shadow Mirror. Charge. Last gasp. Shuffle Shadow Mirror into your deck. Give it plus three, plus three, and increase its cost by three. Uh, in my Complications deck, we used Shadow Mirror. <laughs> Got a lot of value out of her. And uh, I think that we'll be able to do the same thing in uh, in this deck at some points. I'm, I'm hoping. Shadow Mirror is a pretty cool card. So, uh, again, I just hope it doesn't get silenced, because that would suck. So, a knight to remember, a friendly creature disappears to who knows where, then returns in the other lane, Shackled. This card is, uh, it's a card that I like to run in a lot of my singleton decks, because it just gives us more value for playing one of our cards. Essentially, like, I'm looking at Galen right now, just as an example. Uh, Galen, you know, we all know his summon effect. We trigger a knight to remember on him, he shows up in the other lane, and he can do it again. So, it's like a way to get a little bit more value out of your cards in a singleton list like this. Um, next, I run these in almost all of my purple decks. Aldvalot the Assassin and Barrow Stalker. Two very solid, reliable two drops. They uh, they just go down and they, they pretty much make your opponent have to get rid of them because a 2-3 uh, guard with drain and a 1-2 rally with lethal card, both at two cost, are just crazy. So um, these are really fun cards to run and uh, I think they're very helpful in the early game. Daedric Dagger, since we're running... Um, Singleton, I wanted to throw in some items, uh, a wide variety of items, so I felt that Daedric Dagger really helps and uh, it fits the kind of theme of the deck a little bit, so plus it's premium. I like my premium Daedric Dagger. I wanted to run it. So Daedric Dagger, lethal, plus one, plus one. We're really just running it for the lethal, but that plus one, plus one can come in handy sometimes either to save one of our creatures by giving them a little bit of extra defense or to, uh, you know, give them a little bit of extra reach to poke our opponent in the face. It's, uh, it's a very solid item, and it's something that we want to play uh, with Siege or just putting it on a creature normally. Ebon Thread Cloak, this is another absolutely awesome item, and I also have it premium, so that's cool. Uh, Evan Thread Cloak is, it has Mobilize, but you, <laughs> you really never want to play this with Mobilize. Um, plus one, plus two. Summon your opponent can't target the wielder with actions until your next turn. This allows any creature in the game to be Naha Gleave for one turn, which is really, really cool when you have cards like Grave Singer, Night Lord, Night Talon Lord, Blood Magic Lord, anything in our high end that we want to at least get some value for one turn. We can try to prevent that with an Evan Thread Cloak. Now, if our opponent has like a Shadowfen Priest or something, they can just like silence us and get rid of this, but it can't be affected by a card such as Mute or Suppress. Okay, next we move on to Fear Totem. Fear Totem is a prophecy card, which is pretty cool. It's one of five prophecies in the deck. Um, unsummon a creature and reduce its cost by three. We are basically always going to want to be doing this to one of our cards. So again, I'll choose Galen as a target. We can basically play Galen, then Fear Totem him, and then put him back on the board immediately because it will uh, turn him into a zero-cost card because it'll subtract his cost by three. 
and then we can get a little bit more value out of him. Very, very solid card to run in a deck like this. And sometimes your opponent just puts down like uh, something crazy, like a big guard, uh, right before you're about to win. And you can just Fear Totem that back into their hand and not have to worry about it. Or something even more fun with Fear Totem is when your opponent is at 10 cards and then you unsummon one of their cards. That will put it into their hand. They'll be at 11 cards, and that is a big no-no. So that card will get eliminated and put immediately into the discard pile. Really, really cool combo. Um, we have a Green Pact Ambusher. Green Pact Ambusher has Prophecy and Guard, and at the end of your turn, if they have a full lane, if your opponent uh, has a full lane, and Green Pact Ambusher is in your hand, summon her to that lane. Green Pact is really, really cool. I like to Galen this in when I can and get more of them, because not only does it buff our Prophecy count up, but it's really cool when you have like three of these in your hand and your opponent has a full lane, and then all three of them go down on the same turn. It's it's really fun to watch. Uh, Poison Dagger is basically a worse version of Daedric Dagger. It's the same cost. Uh, it's got Mobilize. This we could play Mobilize on this, and we get a little bit more value than playing Mobilize like on Ebon Thread Cloak or something. But uh, Poison Dagger basically serves the same function as Daedric Dagger. Squish the Wimpy, we have a lot of cards in here that have either Drain or have some kind of Slay effect or uh, or whatnot. And and uh, we just kind of want to use Squish the Wimpy to eliminate targets. It's a, it's a removal spell, and it also is a way for us to do a bit of damage to our opponent's face if we have like a breakthrough creature or something. Um, that's a pretty cool combo. I've also neglected to mention, maybe some of you have noticed, this has Mushroom Tower as the only support in the deck, so any action that we have, we will be able to duplicate it with Mushroom Tower through the Betray. Adoring Fan. We have been seeing a bit of Adoring Fan recently in my decks. This has Prophecy Guard and Immune to Silence. Adoring Fan will return as its last gasp. Adoring Fan works really well with Mushroom Tower, so we can just uh, consistently betray this guy and uh, get huge value out of our actions. Aldora the Daring is a really cool card to run uh, if you have like a Siege of Stros Makai coming up. You can play Aldora and then she'll immediately get buffed up to a 9-9 creature. And Skywag will get buffed up to like a... Uh, what does Skywag become? A 4-4 at the end? So um, you can get some pretty intimidating presence. Uh, pretty intimidating board presence with Aldora the Daring out there. Um, Blood Crazed Daedroth. Draw a Wounded or draw a card if there is a wounded creature in this lane. Um, I like Blood Crazed. It's a fun way to draw cards, and there's usually going to be a card that uh, is wounded out on the list because we are running a kind of a aggressive type of um, type of deck. Covenant Plate, Prophecy, Mobilize Guard. Uh, this is another card that we could potentially run Mobilize on. It just adds a bunch of reach, makes us more aggressive, makes our big cards even bigger, and our small cards a little bit scarier. So... I like Covenant Plate. I think that it's a somewhat slept on card. It's not the best card in the game, but it's definitely uh, a little bit underplayed, I think. Because um, that plus three plus one can give you a four two on turn three. So uh, it's it's not uh, anything to scoff at, really. Dark Guardian. Uh, when your opponent draws a prophecy from a rune being destroyed, draw a card. So eventually we'll pivot to a point in this deck where we want to be super aggressive and Dark Guardian will kind of help secure our aggression um, by making it so that way we can keep up with our opponent if they do hit a Prophecy. Fork of Haripilation. If you're looking on the eastern side of the deck over here, you'll be able to see that we have a lot of cards that have more than two attack. We've got a lot of kind of beefy guys over here. Uh, Fork of Haripilation will most certainly go on one of them, and then maybe we could Poison Dagger, we could Squish the Wimpy after that, and then we can get huge value out of our, uh, out of our cards like that. So we can draw... Um, three cards from a creature being killed, and uh, maybe we could even Galen the Shelterer, some some forks in, get them up to a plus one, plus three, which is really fun to do, to be honest with you. Jigglag's Incursion, uh, this might seem like a weird addition. It's one of our prophecies. We usually want to play this on a prophecy, or if we have our Pure Blood Elder out, but uh, Jigglag's Incursion is just a way for us to get to our high end sooner, because if you're looking at the curve, if you've been kind of like... Uh, you know, nervous about this curve. Uh, you should be a little bit, but there are a lot of ways to boost our Magicka, and Jigglag's Incursion is one of those cards that's kind of a, it's a high-risk, high-reward type thing. If we play this, and our opponent just dumps their whole hand, and then we can't deal with it, that's a big problem, but if we play this at the right time, it can give us insane value, and it's just a fun card. Nobody ever runs this thing. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, Soul Tear, 
just draw a creature from your discard pile. Generally, I don't like discard pile shenanigans. I, I think they're a little... Uh, they're running rampant right now in the game. There's a lot of people that will, with Midnight Burial, like kill their own creature and bring it back with... Um, what is it? Reanimate or whatever? I, I don't have the card. But in a deck like this, that's Singleton, I think that Soul Tear is perfectly valid to run, to be honest with you. Uh, we could potentially get two Soul Tears off if we have our Mushroom Tower, but that's about the limit of how many things we'll be able to bring back with this card. Treeminder. Um, the 1-1 one, one guard, plus one, gain plus one Magicka when you summon it. It's a very common card to see people play in purple decks, and it uh, just serves the function of giving us Magicka and maybe blocking off a lane for one turn. We have our Venom Tongue here. It is a 1-4 lethal slay gain plus one Magicka. So it kind of serves the same function as Treeminder. And we could pair it with stuff like Squish the Wimpy or um, where is it? Unstoppable Rage and gain a bunch of Magicka, which is pretty cool to do. Determined Supplier has Guard, Last Gasp, gain max Magicka equal to Determined Supplier's power. Determined Supplier is a prime target for cards like uh, Ebon Thread Cloak, where we can get this guy down, maybe buff him up a little bit, then put the cloak on, then our opponent can't interact with him with actions for at least one turn, and maybe we could kill him with our Mushroom Tower on the next turn or something like that. There's a lot of options with a card like Determined Supplier. Unfortunately, Determined Supplier does get muted and uh, and just generally silenced quite a bit when he's on board, so we, uh, we want to be a little bit selective with when we play him. Uh, Dishnik Yal Archer is here for support removal, but we can, like always, get some extra mileage out of that one damage that he deals. Fell the Mighty, dist or is it a she? So sorry, I think it's a, it's a female orc, Dishnik Yal Archer. Um, Fell the Mighty, destroy a creature with four power or more. Fell the Mighty, I run it in a lot of red decks. It is uh, it's one of the few removal options that just fits really well with a deck like this. I could have thrown Stone Throw in here, but... Fell the Mighty, I think, is more consistent with stuff that you want removed. Like, Stone Throw could get rid of a Lucian Lachance or something like that, or, uh, oh, what's another one? Like, Astrid, any kind of low power uniques like that. But I think Fell the Mighty, generally, we want to be getting rid of stuff with higher power, right? Um, Heavy Battle Axe, plus four, plus one. Just really cool item. Um, has kind of insane stats and, uh, it's another one of those high-risk, high-reward cards. Little Girl. At the start of your turn, Little Girl changes into a 5-5 Ageless Vampire with Drain. I really, really like this card. I think it's a little bit um, it's a little bit strange. You know, I mean, if you've played Skyrim, you know what it's all about. But, you know, uh, <laughs> Little Girl is just kind of one of those weird cards. I love it. Um, provides a lot of high value. It's another high-risk, high-reward, though, because it starts out with 0-2. So it can be killed with Execute. It could be... Uh, silenced. It could be arrow stormed. There's a whole lot of options that our opponent has to take out Little Girl before she changes into the Ageless Vampire. So you just got to be on the lookout for that. Preserver of the Root. We are kind of a ramp deck here, so we're going to have a lot of Magicka at our disposal, and I think that Preserver of the Root is going to get a lot of value being a 6-6 with guard. Reeve Blademaster. Uh, when Reeve attacks, deal 2 damage to your opponent, then increase the damage dealt by 2. I really like Reeve, and uh, I think he's a cool unique. He's just kind of here for aggression, and he's a target for removal. Rising of Bones. Betray. So this already has Betray starting out. It's a uh, summon a 3-3 three, three Risen Horror with Guard. You can do that twice because of the Betray. This is one of those cards. It's like if our Venom Tongue uh, you know, gains us some Magicka, and it's like a 1-1. One, one. Maybe we could sacrifice it with Rising of Bones. Tree Minder is a great example of something that's that's really good to sacrifice. Uh, of course, Adoring Fan is a good one, too. So Rising of Bones just helps us get a little bit of mileage out of cards that maybe have already uh, served their part. Morakai the Deathless. Summon. If you started the game with no duplicate cards in your deck, which we did, you gain 5 health and restore a rune. This is an amazing card. It's a great target for Galen, and it's a great target for a Knight to Remember and uh, uh, Fear Totem, stuff like that. We love getting extra value out of Morakai because Morakai is uh, its one of the reasons that you run Singleton. Being able to repair a rune is something that I believe only one other card in the game can do, and that is the Mechanical Heart, which is a way worse card than Morakai the Deathless. Don't get me wrong, I love the Mechanical Heart, but Morakai the Deathless... Uh, just way, way, way better card in general. Uh, Shadowfen Priest. 
Summon, silence another creature, or destroy an enemy support. Shadowfen is kind of here for uh, the silence, kind of here for the destroy the support. There are a lot of ways that the priest can be used, and uh, I do like the card. I see it everywhere, though. It's kind of one of those, like, if you're playing against a purple deck, you need to look out for Shadowfen Priest. It's one of those types of cards. The Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper's a really fun card. It's a 6-6 six, six with guard that you can put down on turn 5, and uh, only one creature in this lane can attack each turn while the Gatekeeper is in it. Unfortunately, we're not playing a Sorcerer list, so we can't Doppelganger and clone the Gatekeeper to have two of them in a lane because that's really funny. But I do love the Gatekeeper. I think it's an underutilized purple. It's a really cool card from Oblivion, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. So it's uh, it's kind of a card that helps us lock down a lane for a little bit and keep our opponent off of our face. Gortwa Gro Nagorm, the, uh, the angry man from our dex profile pickup here. Gortwag is a warrior exclusive card. At the start of your turn, summon a random creature from your deck to a random lane. There are a lot of creatures in this deck that are intimidating to be on the board, and we're hoping that Gortwag can choose one of them to be in his lane. There's also a fair number of cards, though, that don't have great summon abilities. So if we pulled like a, an Aldvalathi or a Barrow Stalker or a Dark Guardian or an Aldora, uh, you know, we wouldn't really be getting any uh, effect out of Gortwag other than thinning out our deck so that way we can get to our big stuff, which is still a function uh, that can be utilized from this card. Night Shadow. I thoroughly enjoy Night Shadow. I think the breakthrough in the drain is really cool. It's a 6-5. Um, pairs really well with Unstoppable Rage, and it's something that our opponent has to answer immediately. Spine of Elder's Blood. Summon gain plus one max magicka. This is like Treeminder's cooler older brother. Uh, it doesn't have guard though, so maybe not as cool. Uh, they went down different paths in life, I guess. But uh, Spine of Elder's Blood is... I mean, it's a good card. It's... it's Six, six for six. Nothing wrong with it. Nahagleave. Guard, your opponent can't target Nahagleave with actions. Nahagleave is awesome. You can pair him in a lane with um, with the Gatekeeper, and it can kind of become very hard for your opponent to do anything at that point. Pure Blood Elder. When you gain Max Magicka, double the amount you gain. While you have 18 or more Max Magicka, Pure Blood Elder has plus eight, plus eight, and breakthrough. If you lay this thing down... When you have 18 Magicka, it will immediately transform into that. So a 16-16 with Breakthrough. And then you could just Unstoppable Rage and probably destroy your whole opponent's life. Uh, it's a really fun card. I I uh, really enjoy this. It's hard to get it to go off sometimes. I, I mean, some games you play this deck and you're at like 22 Magicka by the end of it, and other games you're like at 13 or something. So... It really depends on how you curve out throughout the match, how much value you're going to be getting from Pure Blood Elder, but if you play the deck correctly, you can get up to a really high magic total. Mechanar. Uh, summon. Stitch together the top creatures from both decks to create an abomination and put it into your hand. I really like Mechanar. He's a fun unique. I run him in most singleton decks because it's helpful to just kind of steal something from our opponent like that and make sure that they're not able to get a whole lot of value out of it. Maybe we can add something fun into our deck. Most of the stuff in my deck we want to keep, but if something comes up where one of our cards is less valuable than our opponent's cards, then we'll transform it into our opponent's card. No big deal. Unstoppable Rage here. Uh, it's a really, really cool card to draw with um, with Siege specifically, but I think there's a lot of targets in the deck that naturally just benefit from it. For anyone that doesn't know, a friendly creature deals damage equal to its power to all other creatures in its lane. So even the friendly ones you will be dealing damage to. Vigilant Giant. Breakthrough, guard, summon, draw a card. Vigilant Giant is a prime example of something that we would probably rather draw off of a Siege, but putting it down on turn 8 is still high value for us. Anything that says summon draw a card is a really good card. It's good to cycle through your deck, especially in a singleton list like this. We have 50 different cards in the deck, so it's fun to see a variety of them, and it's fun to kind of chug through. We're looking for Siege and uh, and Morakai mostly in this deck, so uh, yeah, those are great ways to get us where we're going. Who done it? Costs one less for each creature in your discard pile. Gain plus two Max Magicka. This is a perfect card to play with Pure Blood Elder. 
but it's also good to just play on its own. You can definitely play this before turn eight is another cool part about it because the cost decretion makes it able to be played before that threshold is met. Uh, blood Magic Lord, summon and slay. Put a random Blood Magic spell into your hand. Blood Magic Lord, really, really awesome card. It can be, um, it can be affected by uh, a Knight to Remember and Fear Totem, just in the same way that any of our cards with our summon effects can be uh, interacted with. But if we lay this down on the ground on turn 17, we can Unstoppable Rage, get a bunch of value from it. It's the same thing with our Knight Talon Lord here. Now, Knight Talon Lord has a bunch of damage already. If we were to siege on him, we'd get like a heavy battle axe on him, then we Unstoppable Rage. I mean, we would get so much value from dealing all that damage and then just resummoning the stuff. It's such a great combo. Gravesinger, at the start of your turn, summon the highest cost creature from your discard pile and give it charge. This is going to be something like Odaving, Night Talon Lord, Blood Magic Lord, Vigilant Giant most of the time. So Gravesinger gets us crazy value. If we can slap an Ebon Thread Cloak on him, get him to stay around for just one turn, he'll be already providing us a lot of value. Siege of Stros Mackay. Again, for anyone that doesn't know, if you start at the game with no duplicate cards in your deck, play a random creature, item, support, and action from your deck. The only thing that's not going to be getting that much value out of this is the support part of it. Um, the support that we have is Mushroom Tower. It's the only support, but it's also the only support that we want in the deck. I do enjoy my support cards in purple, but there's not a whole lot of them that uh, will fit better with this specific deck than just Mushroom Tower. So... If we play Siege of Stros Mackay and we have a Mushroom Tower in our deck, it'll pull the Mushroom Tower out, then it will immediately ask us if we want to betray a creature to copy Siege of Stros Mackay. It is a brilliant, brilliant combo. Uh, the Red Year. Deal 10 damage to each creature. The Red Year, like I put in most of my red decks, is our oh shit button. It is when things have gotten too far in our opponent's favor and we need to kind of reset the board. So we pop the Red Year and we hope that uh, we can come back from it afterwards. Odaving, summon, deal 4 damage to all enemy creatures. Odaving, I think, has kind of been affected by the power creep that happened in this game. So he's a 12 cost, but he's not really uh, he's not really as highly valued as the other 12 drop cards in this game are, I think. Because really what he does is he's basically like having a better Ice Storm, but for 6 extra Magicka. And it puts a body on the board, but... Usually Odoving is just going to get hit with a Javelin or an Edict or something like that, so it's kind of hard for Odoving to get a whole lot of value, but if you pull him on Siege of Stros Mackay, or you have a bunch of magic at your disposal and you play him down, then uh, he can be a really, really solid, powerful card. And uh, that's the deck, so thanks for sticking along with me this far. I know that on these singleton lists, the deck explanation is usually a little bit longer because I have 50 different cards that I have to explain, but... That's the long and short of it, and I am just going to shut up at this point and get us where we're trying to go. So I will see you on the other side, and I hope that you enjoy the video. Okay, we're up against Zogmund on Hlalu. They are the war hero. Um, let's see, three actions to start the game off with. Probably not great. I think I'm going to be a bit of a masochist, though, and I'm going to keep Jigalag's incursion. I've also just realized I need to turn my mic up a little bit, so hopefully that's a little easier for you guys to hear. There's that soul tear that I didn't want, but uh, oh well. So I think this is overall a much better hand to be playing. We are going to get up to a bunch of magicka at the start here. There's Siege, wow. So. An early siege tells me that I should play Jigalag's Incursion probably as soon as I can. Oh boy, okay. Ooh, but there's Pure Blood Elder too. I kind of want to play Jigalag's Incursion with uh, Pure Blood Elder. Um, okay, what I was talking about in the pre-game recording about drawing a card is, uh, it still applies here. Blades Lookout. Yeah, that's... that checks out. Blades Lookout is a card that we really, really don't want our opponent getting a lot of value from. Um, do I waste my Soul Tear immediately? Mm. No, I don't think so. Hmm. 
I don't think I do anything here. Reason being, I uh, I want to save the incursion for a possible pure blood elder play, and I can Morakai next turn. Anyway, uh, the thing that I was saying before about this card is that we really, in no way, shape, or form, want this on the board because he is going to be getting uh, constant value from playing overpowered cards, i.e., dragons, and uh, I don't like that one bit. So. We're going to try our hardest to uh, keep him from... Eh, shit. We're going to try our hardest to uh, keep him off of us. This card is really obnoxious. What's a Shadow Mirror? What can Shadow Mirror do here? Hmm. Shadow Mirror, unfortunately, can't do what I want it to right now. How about I do this? Okay, now I need to be a little bit tactical about my next move. So I'm going to Jigglag's Incursion right away. I'm going to play my Shadow Mirror down, just to have something in this uh, on this side of the board to sacrifice when I play Siege next turn. And I'm hoping that he doesn't have a way to gain health before he hits me, because that'll be a lot of damage. Mulamnir, that's fine. That's okay. What I really need to do is pull the red year from my siege. That would be extraordinarily helpful. He's back up to 10 on this thing. Okay, Ebon Thread Cloak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fell the Mighty. Okay, this is way better than what I was going to do before. Because uh, we needed to get that thing gone. And I... No, I was talking about getting rid of this, but next turn I can play Odaving. So I'd rather not take 9 to the dome, I'd rather take 3. We'll see if he's got an answer for that. He's got Skyborn Dragon, that's a pretty good answer. So he's going to drop us down to 6 health. And like I said, he's got this engine going, so he's just still drawing cards. Um, like I said, drawing cards for playing overpowered cards. This Odaving, though, should get a ton of value from him uh, playing all this stuff. And I will play Odaving right in the field lane, so if he wants to play me against it, he's got to make a move now. So he can play a Piercing Javelin, that'll set him back. Oh, I hate that card too, man. Really, really don't like that. Uh, so what I need to do now is play Siege and hope that I get a Daedric Dagger or a... Uh, what's my other one? Daedric Dagger or the uh, the Mobilized Dagger to kill this thing quickly. So we'll play... Uh, I'll play the Green Pact because that gives me a guard over there. I'll put it right there. Covenant Plate. Um, I'll put that in my hand. Mushroom Tower. And Unstoppable Rage, unfortunately, <laughs> doesn't kill anything. And doesn't do a whole lot for us, right? I mean, that's just unfortunate. So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to save it for a better use, and hopefully we'll get... Ooh, that would have been a good target for Rage. Uh, there's the Poisoned Dagger that we wanted. And a Knight to Remember is also really good. I'll hold that. We'll kill this. Um, yeah, I'm going to put an Ebon Thread Cloak on him to try to preserve his life for a little bit. And then I think it's... Ooh, Skyborn Dragon. Man, unfortunate. He wants to get rid of my life gain cards, I get that. Totally understandable. And he now has a lethal dragon in hand. Um, so, <laughs> here's how we come back from this. I need to put something uh, shitty on the board. Determined Supplier is fine. We're going to Soul Tear. Bring back our... Uh, where is he? Morakai. Sacrifice him. Then I think I would like my knight. Ch I'll take Nahagleave. Nahagleave seems safer. Play our Morakai. And I would love to have another creature on the board to betray. But I don't, so we'll just do that. Now we're back up to 16. And uh, we're looking a lot better than we were a few turns ago, right? 
I'm thinking we might even be able to pure blood elder spine of elder's blood. Ooh. But we won't, we won't be able to red year or we won't be able to uh unstoppable rage quite yet. What turn are we on? I'm on turn 11. Ooh, that's rough. Breaks another rune. Um, how many cards? I've got nine cards. There's our mute. Oh man, I really need my uh, my Knight Talon Lord or my Blood Magic Lord. Mm. He knows I have Naha Gleave. Vigilant Giant, Unstoppable Rage does not super work here. Actually, yes it does. Because we will be able to do it twice. So how much damage is that? That's three. Then we'll break through for eight. So that's 13 damage. Unfortunately, we won't gain any health from that. Ooh, this is rough. Um, I'm going to play... He can he can pull something else out with this is the problem. Um, so I'll play the Red Year. Not super thrilled about it, but I will play it. And then we'll play a Spine of Elder's Blood. Maybe that will not seem like too big of a threat to him. We'll go up to... Hmm. Okay, Javelin. See, he's got the Javelin with him. And he's going to pull another one of those things out. Another charge dragon, I think. Yep. He's going to hit me again. Try to punish me a little bit. Shadowfen Priest is good here. Okay. Um, officially in oh shit mode, but I don't have the red year anymore, so you can see why I didn't quite want to do that. Um, okay. That'll be 13 Magicka. That's that's quite a bit. Um, man. I wish we were at 18. This would be so easy if we were at 18 Magicka. I think it's Naha Gleave over here. Shadowfen Priest needs to kill this. I will do my best to cling on to my life here. That Neither of them needed to be muted, but I feel like it's better that they are. It's really unfortunate that my drain creature uh, has just been beaten around. Okay, does he have a way to increase this thing's... He does not. So we're, we are literally grasping at straws here if he pulls a charge dragon he can't use it anymore okay no oh dude that's so disappointing i i really think that blades lookout is is just unfair Dragons are just unfair, man. I, I I know that a lot of people play them, and I might piss some people off, but dragons have too many cards going in their favor. Could you imagine if it said, like, when you play an Imperial, draw a card? That's crazy. That is crazy. Especially when you think about the fact that Tiny Dragon counts as a dragon. Like, I get that the draw a card thing for playing a dragon might have been more balanced when... It was the Skyrim pack with very high cost dragons, right? So maybe you get rewarded for playing something that's high cost, but it's just kind of stupid at this point. You can play um, the the Factotum guy or the Automaton or whatever uh, as well to draw a card, so because it's typeless. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna. Going to stop talking so we can get into the next match. This is the Pestilent 1. They're on Rhetorin. They're on a 75-card deck. Ugh. 
my dog wants to come up and see me. Okay, so... Um, to rapid shot or not to rapid shot? I think I'll rapid shot. There's our whodunit. We actually didn't see a Blood Craze Daedra, the Rapid Shot, a Venom Tongue, or Who Done It at all last match. And this guy is also on dragons, it, it would seem. I'm going to try to get some value from this. I'd like to squish the Wimpy on both of these and get up to uh, like six Magicka next turn. Okay, he's already got a full lane here. Okay, I think yeah, I think I'll squish the Wimpy on one of those, and then I'll play my Blood Crazed Daedroth to draw a card. Probably swings like that, and then like that. Just clears the lane. Okay. Okay, flame spear. Cool. And he's not even going to bother with that. So when flame spear dragon is in the game, you kind of have to be very aware of any card that you have laid down last. So I'm going to lay down a tree minder and then ring out my shadow fan priest. Silence that just so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And there's another Flame Spear Dragon. Interesting. Um, if I play Eldora, he'll just kill Skywag. Yeah, I think I'll do Eldora Gortwag, and I'll just play away from that thing. Opponent does have 10 more health, 14 more health than I do. Okay, he he's really doing a thing. <laughs> he's, Go, get them, Skywag. Go get them, Skywag. I smell the scent of the living. All right. I am going to play my Dark Guardian. We're going to do that, and I think it's more important to lay down a Reeve at this point. So we've got a bit of a, a system going on here, blocking up the shadow lane and putting our intimidating cards in the field lane, which is how I like to play mostly. He's got a Skeletal Dragon. That'll just get Poison Daggered. And we just need to draw... Ooh, that's good. Yeah, so we're going to play the Poisoned... Da Actually, we're going to swing first because Dark Guardian will protect us. Okay, now we're going to Poisoned Dagger. Hit that. He's got a 5-5 Sovereign Guard hero. That's pretty cool. Um, and then we're going to play Whodunit. Triple Flame Spear Dragon is pretty awesome. What's he going to bring back with that? Wow. Well, that's crazy. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Big fan of that. Uh, we're going to put our Covenant Plate on here. It's going to give us a little bit of extra protection there. And I think we'll actually put our Daedric Dagger on something over here. Not quite sure what. I think we just want to preserve both of their lives as best we can. Could I have one there? 
I being stupid? I could have won. Yeah, I really could have won if I just muted that thing. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, I think we'll mute this. But that was uh, oversight on my on my part. He does have a lot to clean up over here. He needs to double guard this lane. Looks like it's going to be word wall. Okay. Blades look out. A little bit too late with the blades look out. Yeah, <laughs> good game. Okay, well that worked out. Okay, we're up against Black Magic, the genius gardener. Let's we'll see what they're on about with their Daggerfall deck. This is a very bad opening hand. Um, this is a, it's a slightly better hand, but it's still not great. Guy or girl is on 76 cards. For anyone who hasn't played ESO, this is Cyrodiil here. Wow, dragons again? This is three games straight in a row, guys. I mean, this, this is what I'm always talking about with dragons, and I see more dragons than I see invade these days. It is... Crazy. I mean, I, there's always the possibility that they're just playing Word Wall to buff up a Soul Tear or something, and they're not actually playing any dragons, but it's, it's pretty unlikely. Okay. Uh, this hand is not super great. I'm going to play the Dishnik just to kill this. It's a very short-term answer to a long-term problem, but the way that I'm seeing how this turn plays out... Uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, I'm going to Dishnik Yell Archer to kill the Word Wall, and then um, I was hoping he'd play something with a little bit more power since it's turn 5, but that's okay. So now I'm just going to hit face like that, and hopefully he swings this into the uh, into the supplier, and then I hit, or I attach the heavy battle axe on here, and I gain plus five magic the next turn to really ramp us where we're trying to go. And that, it seems, is what he is going to do. So sometimes the plan goes just how you want it to. Mushroom Tower early does make it so that way our our siege gets less value overall. Um, I want to know something funny that we could do. I don't really want my opponent to have a bunch of Magicka, but I was going to Jiggle Eggs, Encourage, and Mushroom Tower sacrifice this guy. But yeah, I, I don't really actually want my opponent to have a whole lot of stuff. I don't have a good hand. I suppose I could play the Red Year, but... Uh, I'm a little weary of, there it is, a little weary of um, playing Mushroom Tower now for fear that he has a Shadowfen Priest of his own that he's going to use to uh, destroy that. Gravesinger sucks here. <laughs> Everything kind of sucks here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's rough. I'll play the Mushroom Tower anyway, but I, I did just mention what I think is going to happen, and uh, we'll see how accurate I am with my prediction. There's our Unstoppable Rage. Ooh. Okay. Well, I suppose that's... Uh, we know what he's doing now. He's kind of on a, same, on a similar plan to us. Play that, and Green Pact Ambusher. And I actually think that getting this on board will be more valuable than the 4-1. 4-1 dies to more than a 3-3 does, after all. 
Um, and then I could jiggle eggs incursion. I think I will. Now that I've got a decent board set up. So we're already at 18 Magicka. And if he wants to play out a bunch of crap from his hand, that is so fine because I can play the red year on all of it. Hist Grove is kind of rough. Not going to lie. But we can play the red year next turn. Double Night Talon Lord also kind of sucks. Uh, well, <laughs> this is uh, working out in my favor, though. So, 16-16, make it a 17-17. It's going to deal, uh, what, 18 damage to him? Oops. And he's going to overdraw something. A few somethings. All right, cool. Got rid of his Ice Storm, too. So now we just play Gravesinger, and we hope that it's able to stay on the board. I also hope that he doesn't have anything that he can use to get rid of this. But if Gravesinger could bring back a uh, True Blood Elder, that'd be sweet. I will also mention it's possible to lose this game still. It's very possible to lose this. Ooh, he's got his own Mushroom Tower. Is he playing Singleton? No, he's not. He's got the double Night Talons. Unrelenting Force. Okay. Fair enough. So now I need a Squish the Wimpy to come out. If that was the best he could do, I'll actually play my Gravesinger. Because that makes me think he doesn't have hard removal for my pure blood elder. And uh, now that I'm back at 30, I'm okay to take 17 damage. I don't mind that a whole lot. He did just establish his mushroom tower, so I'm yeah, I'm expecting that. But now we'll be able to play the red ear and wipe out his whole board after this. Okay, double Halls of the Colossus. Kind of sucks to see. Okay. Okay. We really just need to mute one of these guys and then... Oh, well. There's a... Yup. I'm about to get very cynical again. Yeah, I don't... Well, I mean, it's not over yet, buddy. Um, yeah, I don't for the life of me understand why... Uh, why dragons are the way they are, but I suppose this is a good showcase uh, about the state of the game. So, again, he doesn't seem like he's got a whole lot to deal with this stuff. Not happy about laying this down now, but... I think it's really the only option I've got. I can't just sit around and wait for him to interact with me, but it's kind of how these decks go. If I could just get a Squish the Wimpy, I could easily win. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Is he really going to do that? Well, he's kind of locked into doing it now. Uh, hello? <laughs> that was weird. Maybe he's trying to kill it with the red ear or something? What? Wow. What was that about? <laughs> that was a really odd win. Uh, okay. Well, 
I'll absolutely take it. Let's see if we can get a match that's not up against word walls and shouts. That would be pretty novel. We're up against Kennet227, the Blade Master on Guild Sworn. Let's see, uh, Mushroom Tower can get thrown back, Ebon Thread Cloak can get thrown back. I will keep the Tree Minder. And, uh, okay, that's a hand for sure. Now, the question becomes our, our opponent is on 95 cards. The question becomes is our opponent on Expertise, Unite the Houses, or are they on a classic Invade? Uh, kind of throw every single Daedra into the deck. Oh, it looks like they might be on Expertise, so that's cool. Play Aldora. Unfortunately, we can't deal with this yet. He might get this thing to skyrocket off, actually, so that, that'd be cool for Kennet. Seeming like he uh, probably won't be able to, though, which is good for us. Rising of Bones... That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll do a Rising of Bones for sure. Sacrifice Skywag. We'll get another Skywag hopefully next turn. I would love to be able to fork of Horripilation. Draw three cards, maybe proc our... No, never mind. It was a good hope though. And he is going to make me clean up his mess, which is rather rude of him. Hasn't found a support yet, though. Probably because he's on a 95 card deck, but he's going to find one now. How do you guys feel about Explore? I kind of like Explore. It's a lot of RNG, but a lot of the stuff in the game is RNG at this point. Um, I don't really want to play a Barrow Stalker where this thing can just kill it. But I do want to get something on the board, so... There it is. Kind of hoping he hits me again in the face, and then I can play Morakai for some value. He is not going to do that, though. Uh, we'll play Mechanar over here, then. Uh, this is not a great combination. There have been better Mechanar abominations before. Yup. Oh, wow. Okay, he gets some serious value out of this card. Hoping he puts more items on this, that way I can fell the mighty. Well, I don't want to deal with that anymore. We'll put this over here. Now that this thing is a 4-7, it is susceptible to fell the mighty itself. Um, which is kind of a strength of Venom Tongue, is that it's not susceptible to that card. But Venom Tongue is susceptible to its own types of removal. I'm hoping that this can stay on the board and that I can get my Pure Blood Elder down. Stendar's Hammer, really. Hmm. Okay, I don't know if he knew how Stendar's Hammer worked when he put it on. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I will play my Pure Blood Elder. I will put the fork on. And we'll gain two, uh, two Magicka and refill our hand. So now we're kind of a little bit ahead of our opponent. What are your Guard and Ward. Well, let's see if we can find something new. Hmm. I think it's definitely Rapid Shot Odovang. Okay, that's interesting. So that, oh, well, 
Never mind. I think we're doing this now. Yeah, I think uh, we might have just won. If he doesn't get, like, a javelin or something. Because we have Squish in hand. Cool. Uh, I don't even need to use the Squish. <laughs> Good game. There's that Pure Blood Elder combo coming in clutch again. Okay, we're up against Taltuga, Master of Madness. I think I may have played against Taltuga. Sounds familiar. It's ringing some bells. Uh, they're also on Guild Sworn, like our last opponent was. They're on 75 cards. They are the Master of Madness, so we need to look out for that. And uh, so far, this opening hand is looking... It's looking interesting. Not quite sure what I want to shuffle in with Galen, but I think Galen will be my first card. Okay, and I'm I'm thinking that this is going to be Unite, since we have a Battle Mage's Onslaught immediately played. Uh, I'll Galen in Little Girl. Like I said at the beginning of this video, when I was doing the deck explanation, I really like Little Girl. I think that there's a lot of value in that card, and turning it into a 3-5 actually... Uh, it makes it so that way it can't be killed by Fell the Mighty, Lightning Bolt, anything crazy like that. Uh, we are getting kind of a lot of high-cost creatures, though, so Tree Minder is going to be my next move, then Spine. Rift and Pickpocket. He's going to be looking for purple cards from us. And thankfully he can't get any of this stuff, since it's in my hand already. Um... Do determine supplier. Okay. Well, we need to pivot towards full aggression in a few turns here, or else we're probably going to lose. Okay, he's got a blue card and a yellow card on board. Um, yeah, I think that Night Shadow is the more aggressive card here. Getting a Pure Blood Elder down would have been nice, but I also don't want him to. Uh, I don't want him to steal this. I feel like he's got a rest coming up soon, so. I think I'd rather him arrest something like this that doesn't have such a good passive ability. Or really a passive ability at all. Um, Squish the Wimpy. That could be pretty good. I'll hold on to that. Uh, hmm. Play the little girl. I'd like to save Squish for uh, either Pure Blood or Night Talon Lord. And ideally, there's a world where Pure Blood gets stolen, and then I can use Squish on my Night Talon to uh, to kind of reverse that. So I think that's what I'll do. Lay down the Pure Blood here, and then we'll wait, see what he's up to. Okay, cast into time. That's kind of nuts. And he's really not liking me having this guy out. Um, Blood Crazed Daedroth seems like a good move here. We're going to block up this lane so he can't hit me. Not that he really wants to with a Unite deck. We do have all purple on the board. I don't know how much of his deck he has at the ready, so we'll we'll see. He's gonna fetch a Daedra.
Okay. So if I played a squish here, he'd deal three extra damage. It's not really worth it. We could get him to overdraw with that, but I don't think that's really all that worth it. So I'll hold on. Could have another one of those reverberating strikes. Okay. He is simply biding his time here. He's at 10 cards right now. I don't think any of them are, are uh, removal spells, so... Otherwise, he probably would have used them before, but... Okay, he's, he's arrested that, and that is really bad. So I'm going to use my Knight Talon Lord to get that back. He's invading. Getting an Oblivion Portal out is really good for... Uh, for Unite decks because... Um, you get that neutral card, and then you can get Painted World on the board one turn sooner. Ooh, okay. Well, oh, wow. That was, uh, that was a nice play. It's a little annoying, to be honest with you, but it was a nice play. I'll play Ald Velothi. Now what does he have as his... Oh, he's got my Knight Talon Lord in there. Shit, dude. That was a good play. If he's not playing Unite, I'm kind of a little annoyed that he's playing this deck where he's just stealing all my shit. He hasn't really gotten a whole lot of cards to unite with yet. Well, actually, I take that back. He's got everything but a green card. Okay, I don't have a mushroom tower anymore, so gotta be careful. Drain life, um, don't need to do it right now. Okay, he's got to be getting close. Okay, he's got red. Ooh, I like that. Uh, he's got red, blue, green, yellow. Or, he doesn't have green. Red, blue, purple, yellow. He just needs green. And I will tell you right now, I just need a red year to reset this, because it's kind of crazy. He doesn't have a purple anymore, and he doesn't have a red anymore. I think I'll wait. I'll wait him out. I can play the long game here. Okay, he's got a green now. Looking for a purple and a red. If he gets Gortwog here, he wins. I think that's the only one. Cool. So, what we want to do now is Morakai, in case he ever decides to actually hit me. But uh, we'll get rid of his Blighted Werebat. And because we know what he's trying to do, I'm just going to sit here and wait. I thought that I could be aggressive early on, but couldn't really deal with it. He does have at least one purple card in his deck that we know of, and that is my Knight Talon Lord. Gets another blue. Can't really do anything with that. Well, he, he made it work. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> it's pretty good.
That sets him back quite a bit. He's now got a red card, though. He's got two red cards. He's got three red cards. There's my siege. Um, I would like to see a unstoppable rage here. Put my Ebon Thread Cloak on that. There it is. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, well, uh, I should have put my my Ebon Thread Cloak on this, but live and learn. I didn't think this was going to survive. I, I didn't really think I'd get an unstoppable rage there, but how much was that? That was a... Oh, yeah. Well, it wouldn't have mattered. Oh, but yes, it would have. If I put that uh, Ebon Thread Cloak on there, he would have survived the Red Year, which would have been cool. Fortunately, Aldora now is not able to uh, is not able to fully proc off because I don't have any other supports in the deck, but getting her on the board is better than not. Okay, he does have a purple now, so we need to be cognizant of that. This has been the longest game ever. It's getting rid of Immolating Blast. I kind of have to play the Red Ear here, otherwise... Like, if he's got a green card, um, we're, we're dead. So, I have to do that. Play the uh, little girl here. If I was smart, I would have swung with Reeve first, but that's fine. Cool. Pretty high-value Ageless Vampire. Dishnik, y'all archer that thing. So, he... Yep, he's going to arrest that. Did I use Fell the Mighty already? I did. Ooh. Well, uh, this might be the end. He just needs a green card, so... I'm going to play my Morakai because there's no way in hell he's even thinking about hitting me at this point. Moment of clarity, please don't have a green creature or support or item. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Heavy battle axe will bring me a little bit closer to killing him. So I do need to take care of at least one of these. We'll hit him. I'd like to hit him again, but I don't think I can. Uh, we have... Oh, I should have put my heavy battle axe on. God damn it. Wait, I could have won again. I have to drain life. Jesus, dude. Sometimes I am just not, uh, not awake when I play this game. <laughs> okay, we'll see what he does. He's got Fell the Mighty. He's going to doppelganger my Ageless Vampire. Probably make Unite cost less. Okay, how much damage can I do? Six, seven damage? That that should kill him. So I think we've got the game in the bag. Okay, well, I don't know where his Unite the Houses was hiding in his deck, but that was a, a very long, prolonged, sad game against Unite, to be honest. But that's another win. I asked to not play against dragons, and lo and behold, didn't play against dragons. Okay, we're up against Thunder 5000, the Forgotten Hero. I had to go for a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm a part of an axe-throwing league that meets on Thursdays, so I had to go to that. Um, Beat my high score. Got a 48. The highest you can get is a 64. I'm uh, this is my first time doing it, so I'm a bit of an amateur. But uh, every time that you, oh, I think my volume's a bit too loud now. Every time that you uh, get a new record, you get like a poker chip that has your record on it. So I've got three now. 
which is pretty cool. And uh, this guy is on Slinking Jackal, which is a really good card at the uh, beginning of the game. So I'm just going to have to look out, hope that he doesn't have anything for the next two turns, really, in order to keep up with him. Ooh, Jigglag's Incursion. Do I play this? Uh, it's the only card I can play, and it opens up options for next turn. I think I will. We'll see what he has to say about that. Hmm. I hate this card so much. Move is just one of those mechanics that... Uh, it disturbs me to play against. I don't like it. it. It shifts up the, it shifts up the way the game plays too much. Uh, okay, I can fell the mighty on this, but then I can't do anything. So this is an example of us curving out uh, completely incorrectly. We drew, just the middle of our deck. Ooh, that is good though. We want to get rid of the move guy, even though he's got less on him. Less uh, attack on him, I mean. Okay, well, he's going to move. So, I think what we do now... Man. Man, oh man. Okay, Dark Guardian's good. In fact, Dark Guardian's very good here. This is good, too. So, I think we kill that. And he's got a bunch of move cards, but I can't... I can't just play around the fact that he might move a card into the other lane, so I've got to double guard up this lane. It's looking like he's going to move something, though. Ooh, Gavel. Okay, Gavel of the Ordinator. That's pretty good. Now, Dark Guardian takes care of both of these. Oh, man. Wow. Blood Dragon. Okay. Well, here's the problem that I'm running into right now. I mean, you can see the problem. Um, what I want to do here is get two Risings of Bone on the field. Now, this thing is immune to lethal, and that sucks. I think that really sucks. So I could do a Poisoned Dagger and then Rising of Bones betray the Mobilize unit. I don't know if that's correct. I could Aldora. I could Aldora. Do I want to Aldora? Oh man, this is rough. Uh, okay. I think after thinking about it for a second, this is my play. So he will hit me for five, undoubtedly. If he wants to hit me for more, he will have to javelin something but he's just gonna hit me for five i get the red year oh that's really bad oh wow all right well that's a oh oh do you see one magicka would have saved us here man uh okay well i will just leave my shame is uh immeasurable <laughs> i think we're just done with that one um, that's unfortunate, because we had a bunch of cards that if I just played Who Done It that turn instead, we would be alive. But you know what? Good on him for beating us there. We had too many, too many good games in a row, and it's rewarding, not rewarding. It's refreshing to be beaten by something that's not a dragon deck. So I'll take it. We're up against Keys 876, War Hero. Um, don't want any of that right now. And, uh, this is, uh, not too much better, to be honest. There's little girl again. Man, I'm, that's crazy what he played down there. I mean, there's a number of things he could have played, like I said, in the deck explanation. It's a ton of things he could have used to get rid of little girl, but I was not expecting that one. Okay, Fear Totem is not it right now. We're, we're running into the same problem. What did we have before? Gortwog, Preserver, Little Girl? 
And we had to fell the mighty in our hand too. Ooh, adoring fan actually <laughs> actually keeps this off of our face for a second, so I'm down. I'm game. Uh I will even play an Ebon Thread Cloak onto it. Just the name of the game is Survival right now. Can't do anything to me. Sorry. Okay, Blood Sorceress sucks to see, but hopefully we'll be able to get rid of that. So, Fell the Mighty on this. This needs seven Magicka to activate, right? So we've got three turns to deal with that. I think it's... Well, he had some kind of action, right? Very aggressive. I love this card. Anyone an enraged Dragon Knight enjoyer in the comments? I'm a big enraged Dragon Knight enjoyer. I'm going to play the little girl. Um, I don't think that it will survive, but I feel like it's a better play here. Okay, so uh, this is... <laughs> little girl can't stay on the board, man. I need a prophecy. Um, well, that's a prophecy. <laughs> That is certainly something that can be played. Uh, that actually might help me more than I think. And there's our guy again. So Preserver of the Root, little girl, will use all eight of our Magicka here. And uh, he has to at least get rid of one of these. I'd say for his deck, he wants to get rid of Preserver of the Root to hit me in the face more. But also... Ah, shit, man. Super shit. Well, that sucks. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Wow. Forgot about that. Um, okay. <sighs> this is tough. This is really tough. It's really got me cornered here. Um, if we play this like that, put our Daedric Dagger here, get rid of that. I can put either an Aldvalathi or a Spine down. Or I could do Who Done It. I think Who Done It's the play. Reason being, I have Odovink, right? Odovink could come down next turn if I play Who Done It. I just need to make sure that this card and the next card that he gets aren't crazy good enough to get rid of my preserver. So we uh, will have to hope and pray that something magical can happen. This will be a turn seven or turn eight. Uh, Odoving, you are fucking kidding me. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's got exact lethal. No, dude, you're not excused. <laughs> you're so not excused for that bullshit. <laughs> Please, let me live. Give me my covenant plate in my hour of need. No! <laughs> that is so stupid! Oh my god. I mean, it's not stupid. It's just... I can't believe that I've the unsummons are unreal right now. What the hell? How did two people in a row do that to me? Okay, we're up against XX Zeus XXX. Uh, do I keep the siege? Sure, why not? That's a really rough hand. Uh, I like seeing Blood Crazed Daedroth here. I forgot to read Zeus's deck. He's a 75 card deck. And we'll just sit here and wait for him to play.
Who's your favorite Olympian? I know I've been asking you guys a lot of questions for the comments, but does anyone have a favorite Olympian? I was a really big Percy Jackson fan when I was a kid, so uh, my favorite was always Poseidon. But uh, I think Artemis is really cool. I like Athena. And... to think of any others hades is pretty cool too i mean the whole persephone story that's not really cool but you know lord of the underworld that's pretty neat a little bit of an edge lord though i also can't figure out if i like the greek names or the roman names more because like on the one hand you've got poseidon but then you've also got neptune like those are both pretty sick so i'm not sure which side of the coin i lay on so glad they added stuff you can click on keeps my monkey brain entertained when people aren't playing usually i i edit this stuff out but i think i'm going to keep it here just to show you guys what i what i do and how i play <laughs> okay we're not going to play anything just yet do you guys think that blade master reeve would have been a better name than Reeve, comma, Blade Master. I think so. I also think that Dragonborn Mirak or like Mirak the First Dragonborn might have been a better name than Mirak Dragonborn, but perhaps that is just me. Uh, okay. Venom Tongue's more important to me right now. If he has a Sentinel Battle Mace, that's a big feels bad, but... Okay, that's also kind of a... Kind of not great. Uh, well... I think we'll... Ooh. Yeah, Determined Supplier. We'll see if he can't kill this thing, then I do the same thing I did a few games ago with the Heavy Battle Axe and gain a shit ton of magicka get up to our siege although it's likely he has an item to equip to kill my determined supplier he is on the shackle game for sure Ah, uh, okay. Well, this sucks ass. <laughs> um, do that and that. Because it's the only thing that we can do. I believe this is procced three times now. Plunder. Sentinel Battle Mace. Okay. So not the end of the world here. Do that. Kill that. Tree minder. Okay, we're in business. We're staying alive. We just got to keep an eye on this stuff. So his battle mace. How much was that? What did he just... What? Oh, dude. <laughs> dude. Come on, man. That sucks. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that really sucks. That throws my game plan off a bit. He also gained uh, a little bit of knowledge that I'm a singleton deck. guy's dealing nine damage with every swing he's gonna turn it into a hero of anvil huh. well 
That's pretty funny. That's decidedly less funny. Okay. Fork. Cool. Um, is it weird if I want to shuffle in more Mechanars? I think that's weird. There's Rage. Therana. Yeah, I hate to do it to people, but that is a very easy mute. Now, if I rage here, I deal 12 damage. Uh, it's pretty close to being awesome. So... Ah, uh, shit. Um, lay my Gravesinger down. Seems like he doesn't really have anything to get rid of my my dude. Dude, what is going on? <laughs> what what's with the belligerent giants? This is crazy. Okay, he's going to do that. What the hell? The belligerent giants are out of this world. Uh, let's do that. He's got a prophecy. No! <laughs> There's no way this is happening! What's going on? Man, I am tired of this unsummoned bullshit. That is insane. Okay, we're up against Yami, or Yami, 1990 Sam, the Ghost Whisperer. Um, hmm. Throw all those back. We definitely don't want two of our prophecies in our starting hand, but this is a, a lot worse, I think. Have we gotten a card out of the graveyard with Gravesinger yet? In any of these games? I don't know if it's happened. Our opponent got a card with Gravesinger. I think. I'm playing Shadow Mirror simply because there's uh, no threat of it getting muted really in a monk deck, so... I think I'm okay with it going out on the board. Yeah, and that's fine with me. Okay, this is <laughs> such a bad opening hand. I can't even... I mean, just look at it. I don't need to describe it. Okay, could be on some Ring of Namira type stuff. Wow. Those 13 cards that are 7 and above are really coming back to bite me in the ass. Gotta remember he's got Fighter's Guild Recruit and Golden Initiate in his deck, so... Looking like a prophecy-heavy monk list. Yup. Okay. Um, I really don't want that card getting off. So that's just something I've got to deal with more intensely, so we'll we'll waste a turn and get rid of that. And I don't like the idea of playing Gatekeeper in a lane with a lethal creature. I'm fine if we kind of prolong this out for a bit, though. Um, 
In fact, I'll, I'll put the gatekeeper down. I'll wait. A, I'll wait a turn, and then he probably just kills my Dishnik Yall. Yeah, I was going to Rising of Bones on that thing, but didn't really think about it. Okay, we hit Gortwog. Gortwog could be really cool. It's got a fresh start. Yikes. Okay, Gortwog, again, could be really cool. If he pulls out a shitty card like a Ald Velothi Assassin or something right now, I can Rising of Bones on it and then... Uh, turn it into a 3-3 with guard, which is more valuable to me right now than a 1-1 lethal. Because cards that Gortwog summons, they can't attack right away, so that is something you need to keep in mind when playing him. He is just going to banish him, continue on his terror. So, okay. <laughs> Morikai is delightful to see. Probably could have used Morikai a few games ago, to be honest. But now he's all out of his Prophecy Fighters Guild recruits. It's likely he's got three cast into times. I didn't look to see how many he's got, I don't think. Ooh. Yeah, that's bad. Prophecy? Hey, Prophecy. Uh, I think it's got to be over here. Okay, cool. Kill this. Oh, man. Um, okay, struggling to stay alive a bit here. Let's just do a little refresh on our guards. So I'll kill that off. I'll do that. Another thing that that does is it adds a card into our discard pile for, uh, for whodunit. So that's another... Synergy I, I neglected to mention before. And I've got the red year for when he lays down something crazy. Like, there's no way in hell he doesn't run a Kinral Burglar. So when that goes down, we're going to have to play the red year. Wow. He's playing all of his prophecy cards before he can get any value out of them. Which I like. I'm a big fan of that. Okay. Uh, I'd rather block him off here. He's only got two cards. Fresh start. Let's go, baby. I think I need to see a Soul Terror to get my Morikai back. Okay. Nice. Uh, okay, anything that I play... Pretty much anything I'd played there, unless I did like Night Shadow, Heavy Battle Axe, or Spine of Elder's Blood, Heavy Battle Axe. Uh, pretty much anything that I played there was going to be a solo drop, so 
I figure Naha Gleave's the most reliable one to stay on the board. Yup. So that's two cast into times gone. And I'm not upset about it. I think this guards up the lane pretty well. Now we can kind of hide a Night Shadow in there. And I, I'm going to break a rune, actually. I always say break a rune. I'm going to break my ring. And uh, lay down a spine as well. So we got more of a, a heavy presence on the board. Emulating Blast. Well, that sucks. Uh, Night Shadow has been tossed around today. I feel bad for him. Okay. Okay. Ooh, well, maybe some Grave Singer value. Can't be interacted with. With even an Immolating Blast, so... We'll see if he can bring back a Naha Gleave for us. I'd like if he could get all the way back to Morakai, but there's just no way in hell that's happening. Dawn's, Dawn's Wrath! Jeez, dude. Nice play. Uh, I'll play Blood Magic in the field lane. There's a Drain Life, that's good to see. Not going to use it quite yet. Okay, double thieves done. Very rough. I need to see my siege sometime soon. Chimera. Okay. Chikalag's incursion benefits. Mostly just me at this point. I can't imagine that Monk is running too many cards that that need uh, over 12 Magicka, so we'll see what he's up to. Each one stands ready. I really don't want that pulling another Thieves' Den, but... Is unstoppable rage. <sighs> okay. There's no way that I can stop this from happening at this point, so go get your other thieves done. <laughs> what I need him to do with his 14 Magicka is get a bit too cocky play a bunch of cards down and then I play the red year and just set him back to square zero I also don't think I've seen a thieves den I, I don't think I've seen three thieves dens ever in my life protector of the main he's gonna just do that and that's cool Ooh. Very cool. Okay, so I can at least rage onto that with with Fork. I can rage with Fork. That's good. That'll fill my hand completely back up, I think. Or no, it'll get me to eight cards. Nine cards, because I'm going to draw one next turn. What did he steal from me? Oh, I can't rage with Fork anymore. I kind of can. Um... Oh, wait, no, this is going to draw... Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Hold up. If I play this... Yeah, I've got one rune charge left, so... Play Rage. Cool. Very cool. Okay, I think... He took my Gravesinger. Let's see if we can get it back. Okay, we got an Ahag Leave. That's cool. That actually saved my ass so hard. Corpse Curse will be really good. Drain Life is really good, too. 
I'm glad to see this guy back. He's going to devour. <laughs> well, his devour did nothing there, so that's really good. And he is running out of steam, so I'm not going to hit him. I'm just going to try to establish my board a little bit better. But I think we've got this one. I think we'll be okay. We've got 13 damage over here and then 20 damage. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. That's unfortunate. Mute. Um, mute could be good later. Hmm. What are the odds he draws a cast into time or a dawn's wrath next turn? What are the odds of that? Probably pretty low, right? I'll just play the Odaving. There's his other initiate. Okay, and then I've got a Night Town Lord coming up too. Uh, we we know that both of those cards they're not uh, they're not a piercing javelin, and we haven't seen a javelin from him yet. So I'm thinking we're good on javelins. Probably didn't put any in his deck. No unstoppable rage for us, but pretty good nonetheless. Cast into time, though. Okay. That's his third, right? So we don't have to worry about that anymore, thankfully. And if he doesn't have a guard, we just... Oh, shit, man. That's rough. That is some rough stuff. Okay, I have only exclusively actions in my deck, or in my hand right now, so... Wow. <laughs> Way to rub it in. Uh... Yeah, you know, I'll play Corpse Curse over there. I don't mind if he hits me for four. I know he's going to gain a bunch of shit onto that guy, but uh, it doesn't matter too much because I can red year him next turn, and I'm, a, I'm imagining that he's going to play something. He doesn't play anything. Okay. Remember what I said last game about Galen the Shelterer on Mechanar? I think that's what we'll do. We might pull a Mechanar with this, which would be kind of crazy. Whoa! What a pull! Holy shit! Um, I think we... Uh, okay, I would like Pure Blood Elder, but I think Mirak is the more responsible pick, right? So we can steal something big that he gets. Wow, I'm glad I took that. He does have javelins. He's only got 14 cards left. Those fresh starts are kind of paying off. We really have to be close to Siege or Mushroom Tower or something. Does he have another javelin that he's willing to waste? He has a fork too. This guy's going to overdraw. He's got 11 cards left. I'm so down to Fear Totem this, or even... Ooh, Fear Totem my Mirak. Can I do that? Mirak would be... I can't do it in the same turn. Master of Thieves. Shit. Oh, shit. That's so fucked. Okay. Ooh, that's good. Um, poisoned 
dagger. We'll do that. I need drain life with uh, with my mushroom tower. But I don't trust him. He's got the mausoleum delver. You could have two of those, and then he just wins. So I also haven't seen Solter. I need the Solter. I need Solter with Mushroom Tower. Javelin. Okay. Glad to see it. He's got 10 more cards. Can we last him out? Leaf Lurker. Just a dry Leaf Lurker. Rapid Shot. Uh... Yeah, I'll take it. Bump that back into my hand. It's now an 8 cost. So he knows he's got to look out for that now. Because he can see that in my hand when I bump it back with Fear Totem. Just an FYI, in case anyone didn't know. So he's now fully 100% aware of that. There it is. Told you that thing was in his deck. Uh, if I play Mirak and then squish the Wimpy, I'm, uh, well, he probably wants me to do that, right? That's his his big idea. Dude is literally at eight cards in his deck. Uh, he's got Immolating Blast. That's what he's holding. Do I have anything with Slay left? Um, he doesn't have my Venom Tongue, does he? Okay, what is the damage that could happen? Ooh, Master of Thieves. Hell no. That's the damage that could happen. Okay, uh, we need to steal that. Not super thrilled about it, but we need to do it. He's got Emulating Blast, though. He's got Javelin for that. Okay. Could I get Siege? That would be helpful. Ooh, come on. No Immolating Blast anymore. Oh my god. Do we win? Dude, legitimately? Hold up. Oh my god. I was <laughs> so nervous during that. Holy shit. We actually won. That's crazy. That guy had a very bizarre deck. I was looking through his discard pile at all the shit that he played. Almost decked himself. Wow. What a crazy matchup. Okay, we're up against Killicam 3, the Master of Madness. They are on Empire, so things to look out for in Empire right out the gate are a new era, Iliad Guardians. Uh, that's that's pretty much everything that I hate. Oh, um, Khajiit. Don't like Khajiit, which we just kind of played against a little bit. Uh, what else is in Empire? Um... Every kind of removal, basically, is in Empire, so we need to look out for that. Uh, don't hate removal, though. It's just we need to watch out for it. Um, dragons, always viable in any colors, so we need to keep our eyes peeled. And I think that's about it. Those are the usual suspects for Empire. I always say... If, oh, when I go up against Empire, I would love to see Tribal Imperial. That would make me happy. Because I feel like that's how Empire was designed. It was like a Tribal Imperial style, but people play it with 
all types of garbage in it. So, and that's fine. You can you can make as many garbage decks as you want. I I love garbage decks, but I feel like the developers intended Empire to be played a different way. Does that make sense? Oh man, we are <laughs> really just being superstars with how we're drawing. I'm putting Aldora out now on turn well, two for us, but three for him, because now that it's got the buff on it, it can't be killed by Crushing Blow. Edict of Azura is not available. Javelin's not available. Cast Into Time isn't available. So this thing will at least proc once. Although I am using my ring charges way too frequently. Caius's machinations with nothing to draw it on. Or betray it on. I don't know why I said draw it on. Okay. Could have been sitting there kind of formulating his next turn, or just uh, like I do sometimes, could have been at work and you're on break, and then your 30 minutes is up and you're like in the middle of a match and you just gotta close your app. So I get both ways. I feel like the eight prongs on the sun here were very intentional because there are eight divines plus Talos being the ninth divine, but I doubt that Khajiit would worship Talos. So you have uh, all of their aspects essentially of, uh, of the eight divines. I don't know what they're called exactly. I think Junal might be one of them and Alkosh is Akatosh. Uh, but I feel like this design was very purposeful and then you have obviously the crescent moon is inside of the sun here, representing how the the Khajiit, for those who don't know, are born differently under different signs of the moon. So you have uh, like your Alfik conjurer is a little cat. That's actually what the uh, the house cat type of Khajiit are called. They're called Alfik. Okay. Oh wow, is this is this tribal imperial? That's crazy. Uh, shouldn't have swung there with Skywag first. Should have swung with Aldora. Because when you're breaking a rune, it's always better to, ju to just do max damage first. That way, if you do hit a prophecy, you've at least done the maximum amount of damage that you can. This is actually Tribal Imperial. I am very happy. Oh, wait a minute. Gearwork Spider, okay. Okay. Could be a flesh Atronach deck. Either way, I'm happy. I'm excited. I think we kill Skywag here. Uh, we'll do a little bit more damage. And I'll play my Ebon Thread Cloak. This way, if he has Divine Fervor, it doesn't kill Aldora. I'm a little bit worried though because we're running out of uh, we're running out of steam here. We need to have something to play next turn that's able to be drawn. Uh, yeah, able to be drawn right away. Okay, Killicam 3, uh, our Master of Madness friend, is taking a little while on his turns. Does anyone have a favorite recruit? I don't know what mine is. I like this Breton recruit here. 
the Imperial recruit, he's kind of like uh, the Breton recruit. She looks like she's ready to kill someone, you know. But the Imperial recruit, he looks like he's ready to be shot by an arrow. Like he's standing prime position, like uh, red coat style, right on the front line, just ready to get shot. Ooh. Whoa. Nice play, dude. I in a million years not expecting that. Not at all expecting that. Um, I think we play the Venom Tongue over here with the Daedric Dagger equipped. That way it can deal with both of these potentially, or he'll have to swing both in in order to kill this. Seven cost. What the hell is going on? I never want Tribal Imperial to be played against me again. <laughs> That's just facts. Uh, we'll wait. Jesus, I needed a, a boost from that. But if he realizes I don't have anything playable right now, uh, I am boned. I mean, I need the Red Ear to go off. But I can't do that if Venom Tongue didn't boost my magicka uh okay what can i do what can save me here scouts report he probably has transit a shrine in his deck that he's looking for bishop of the hour holy shit oh. <laughs> uh oh no i can't i can't Okay, he's got eight. I was going to ring out a Night Talon Lord. I'm so glad that I misclicked and, and didn't bust my ring out because I need the Red Ear to proc. So he's got nine over here, plus eight is 17, plus four is 24, or plus seven is 24, 29. He has lethal. Aspiring Soldier, Caius's Machinations. Oh, he's going to be so pissed. Please don't swing. Hold off one more turn. Dude. Okay, hold up. Sorry. We'll see if uh, if that induces a, a quit. He does have a card that's plus five, plus five. We know that because Bishop of the Hour totally procced. He's just waiting. He's, he's Mr. Cool. He does not care. I'm capable of dealing 11 damage next turn. If our spine stays alive. Has he played a willpower card yet? I don't think he has. Looks like our opponent might have rage quit a bit, but I see him messing with his cards. Never mind. I think this person is just... Oh. Yeah, I think this person is just mega-brained, and they're trying to, like, get the most juice out of every action that it can. Um, I'm actually not going to go for the heavy battle axe, Shadow Mirror. I just feel like it's not time. Might be able to hit him with that burst next turn. Which would be very valuable. But I don't see anything in my hand that really supports a heavy battle axe shadow mirror last turn. If that makes sense to everybody. Because if I if I do that and then he clogs up the lane, I'm just gonna lay down like a nine cost Night Talon Lord, and then that's not going to do anything. So I want to have some way to 
support them. Eraxia Tharn. Uh, does she... Oh, okay. There's our fork. Shadow Mirror goes up to five with this thing on and then drops down to three. So this is kind of what I was talking about. This Euraxia is at 13. That's pretty crazy. Um, Gravesinger will pull back a Venom Tongue. So we'll see if he can do that. Um, it's also six, which will synergize with our Shadow Mirror Heavy Battle Axe. But I don't know, guys. This is this is a tough tough one to try to win. Transit a Shrine for sure. Ulfric's Uprising. Holy shit, man! How does that work if you kill Euraxia then? Wow. So he's going to get back a Empire Dread Mage. Holy shit. Okay, I need a... a oh, Siege. Um, that's not really what I'm looking for, but could help. Okay. Man, this is... This is some cheeks. Uh, shit. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to Hail Mary here. I'm going to hit him like that. And I am going to hope and pray. For... What did that... That didn't... That do something? Looks like it did. Yeah, it pulled the Dread Mage back. It's just not showing up. Uh, I'm going to hope and pray for a good siege, though. I think that's the only thing that could save me here. Yeah, I don't see the card. Isn't that weird? Weird. He's got 19 damage plus... He's got 29 damage. I haven't drawn a prophecy yet, I don't think, right? Shadow Mirror could come back as a force to be reckoned with. Never mind. <laughs> uh, wow, my my guy's really setting up the OTK. There's Shadow Mirror. Are you serious? Put the Covenant Plate on. There's our Mushroom Tower. There's our Rage. Okay, we win. Whew. That was a very, very close match. I mean, if my opponent had just started beating the shit out of me, I think that we could have easily lost that. I don't know if I deserve the win, but they were going for the OTK, so I got to respect it. We're up against Always. They are the General. They are on Telvani. Hmm. Oh, oh. If you ever get this hand, ladies and gentlemen, you might as well just leave. But I'm going to stay because it's my, my civic duty to do so. <laughs> yeah, this, I can tell you right now, against Telvani specifically, it is going to take some magic for us to stay alive. Um, determined Supplier gets, no, uh, Little Girl. Little Girl for sure. Then, determine supplier. Long plague firm, midnight stroll. 
think Morikai is going to save my ass here. Assuming that, you know, we can play him. Um, he clearly doesn't have an answer for this ageless vampire right now, so I've just got to bide my time. Looking for something. You know what? I It might be crazy, but I think we can make it to Mushroom Tower Siege. I think we can do that. It's obtainable, at least. Play my Morikai over here. Gain some extra health. Let's keep chugging along. I'm hoping he fills up a lane and I can get some mileage out of my green pact. Telvani Catspaw. I think I forgot to check and see. Man, okay, he wants the Winter's Grasp back. Which means that he is going to be killing his Headless Zombie against my Morikai. Which means that I'll put Reeve over there. Rising of Bones. It's a very aggressive uh, deck with the very low cost creatures. It's at 50 health though, I just noticed that. Wow. Okay. Uh. Well, <laughs> I could play Mushroom Tower here. It's not ideal. Um, I think we do Tree Minder, Rising of Bones. Like so, and then I'll even play my Green Pact. So this gives it uh, four, uh, five targets. So it's a one in 20 chance, assuming that he doesn't kill. Okay. It's a 25% uh, chance. Okay, it's a 33% chance that hits my face. And it does. Winter's Grasp would be cool for him to do now, rather than later. That sucks. Ooh. That's kind of helpful. I'm really prolonging when I'm playing my Mushroom Tower, but I think this is a pretty decent board state. It might induce his Winter's Grasp, which is fine, because it, yeah, I don't plan on attacking him anytime soon. Headless Zombie probably going to pull that right back. That's A-OK -okay with me. So uh, Mushroom Tower needs to be laid down, and I'll put a Daedric Dagger on my Adoring Fan just in case. So he'll do that again. And there is his bat. And there's that. Um, do we play Siege or do we... I think we play Nahog Leave. I think Nahog Leave's our, our answer here. I really need to play Siege next turn, though. The thing about Siege, it, yeah, it's very valuable, but it's also kind of inconsistent. So, Ice Wraith, okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we do that and that. Play our Siege, uh, draw a card, there's Odaving. Put that in my hand. Um, I'll save, uh, no, I'll mute. Mute's fine here. Uh, don't need to sacrifice mute, but I will sacrifice a card to copy siege. We'll play the gatekeeper over here. 
play the Fork of Horripilation on this dude. We'll play an Unstoppable Rage on nobody, because I want to do that on a Drain Creature. Let's see if we can't draw the Drain Creature. We overdraw Shadow Mirror. That's, that's okay, right? Yeah, that's fine. It's not going to come back from the discard pile anymore, but it's okay with me. And then I will actually play that Poison Dagger on this guy. Okay, we'll see if we can come back from this. I can play Pure Blood Elder and Spine. <laughs> He's got the Winter's Grasp. Uh, I can play Pure Blood Elder and Spine on the same turn now. Ooh, wow. Uh, Pure Blood Elder. Spine of Elder's Blood. Get up to 16 Magicka with that. Now I just need one card to boost my Magicka, and we'll get up to an insane number. The forest is my place. Okay, running the Alt Art Leaf Lurker, not a big fan of it, TBH. Okay, Jigglelag's Incursion, that's, uh, that's pretty much all we needed, right? I'll kill uh, Reeve with that. We are now at 24 Magicka, and yeah, I think we can do a little bit of this. Yup, okay, um, Knight to Remember will betray this. I actually think two, one thing that would be really cool, we'll get that out of there. See that little fun synergy there? I was going to Unstoppable Rage on this, but I thought that was kind of cooler. Using your brain a little bit. Alright. Here's another victory. Um, almost out of the... I think it's the lady. I don't believe that's the lover. Let me double check. Yeah, that's the lady. We're up against, oh, we're up against Yami, 1990 Sam again. That was an intense match we had against this guy earlier, so we know what he's playing, and he knows what we're playing. So we've got to be a little bit smarter. This is not a smart hand, though. This is a, this is a stupid idiot hand. <laughs> but we'll try to come back from it. We've, we've had worse hands, right? Wow. Those 13 cards, they are finding their way to the front of the deck every time. But if uh, if that's something you're uncomfortable with, then don't play this deck. Um, if you can potentially live with that, <laughs> I think this deck is a good fit for you. Um, I'll play Determined Supplier next turn. There's his Thieves' Den already, so we're in for a problem right out the gate. He might just just steamroll me, so I'll play Green Pact. I would have liked to Galen in more Green Pacts, but maybe that was a that was that would have been a much smarter play. But I wanted to stop this from happening. Wow. Okay, he's got no fear as of right now. Um, hmm. Yeah, Determined Supplier boosts my Magicka up. That way I can play Pure Blood Elder next turn. He almost definitely kills this guy. He's got Double Thieves done. Night Shadow. Night Shadow suddenly becomes a better... Uh, no, this becomes a better option. Never mind. Okay, Pure Blood Elder, though, I think is the... 
Well, he's got those cast into times and the javelins, so we need to remember that. Mausoleum Delver. Okay. That didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to, I don't think. Play my Vigilant Giant over here. There's our Mushroom Tower. So I'll option the Giant over here with a Knight to Remember. That's why I did that. Because I doubt that he kills the Giant. He probably kills... The, uh, the gatekeeper here. I might gain an in more Pure Blood Elders since it's been such a great card to play with. There's one of his fresh starts. I think he had two of them. Maybe three. Andari Opportunist is kind of rough. Um, okay, we'll lay down a Galen, put in more Night Shadows, because I feel like I'm going to need the health, then I'll lay down my Night Shadow over here. Rather than playing a Knight to Remember on this to block up one creature, I would rather wait until it's something more threatening, plus I have Mushroom Tower next turn, plus Rapid Shot, so that's two damage that I can do to this guy right out the gate. Not anymore. Ooh. Jigalag's Incursion. Kind of gets me where I'm trying to go a little bit sooner. Uh, Fell the Mighty is super cool. And we'll play our Pure Blood Elder over here. Kind of asking for him at this point to Dawn's Wrath this lane too, but We'll see what he does about this. I really want to get my Mushroom Tower down. Okay, this is the same thing that happened last time. We'll see if there's anything playable from him. There is. Okay, I don't want to play my Rapid Shot yet because I'd rather draw two cards with the Mushroom Tower in play. So, hold on to it. Again, playing a, a Rapid Shot, just to further my point, it doesn't do anything really for us over here. It brings this to a 4-4, but we'll kill it with either the Gargoyle or the, uh, the Blood Magic Lord, so... Why would I rapid shot? Just one thing to think about when you're playing Legends is why are you doing a certain thing? I think as long as you have a good reason for why you're doing a play, then nobody can really fault you for it. Um, that's pretty good, actually, for him. I We didn't see that card before. That's another prophecy that he's got in this deck. Uh, I don't quite get why he did that. Okay, Mushroom Tower. Um, we could... Hmm, yeah. Rapid Shot. Should have swung with this first. But Rapid Shot, Rapid Shot. There's a big Night Talon Lord. We'll kill this dude. Get another Gargoyle. We'll break one of his runes, and I think that's good enough for me. It's a pretty good turn. I don't feel the need to mute anything. We know he runs javelins and cast into time, so uh, with 13 magicka, he totally is able to delete this whole lane. Destroy an enemy support. Oh, you son of a gun. Yeah, I hate drawing Mushroom Tower before you draw Siege. It's it's one of the biggest downsides to playing 
a siege deck with only uh, one support. Because you just don't have that anymore. Now, if he's got his thinking cap on, I think he's just going to kill this. Yeah. Okay. Odoving is so good here. Might be better later, though. It might be better later. Um, yeah, let me let me think about this. So we play Gravesinger. We mute these two so they don't matter anymore. Um, I will kill this one. Then I'll actually uh, I'll rising of bones over here. Kill the gargoyle and then put a guard over here. So now we're sitting at a cozy. Uh, ten creatures in the discard pile. So if we have um, if we have Who Done It, then it costs zero, which is nice. Now we have Odoving for whatever his next turn play is. He probably uses some removal on the Gravesinger here rather than my Odoving next turn or my Night Shadow. And I think we're pretty comfy. He has his Mirac, so uh, that's a man. Can this card just not get stolen one time? I want to use Gravesinger. I don't want other people to use my Gravesinger. That sucks. Okay, again though, this... Oh man, this is going to pull back a Mirac. Shit, dude. This is really bad now. Um, okay, so I can't let Mirac die until Gravesinger dies now. He's got that thing that's going to pull back a Thieves Den. Oh my god. Oh. I would like to play with Gravesinger. I really would. Such a cool card. That I will never get to use. He's got to have some kind of removal there. Yeah. As long as Reeve can stay alive. Oh, wait, no, all this... Oh, this is so bad. Okay. I need him to beat the hell out of me and hit a Covenant Plate. Covenant Plate, come on. Save me. I know you're in there somewhere. I need you. Covenant plate, please. Okay, that's game. <sighs> that sucks. I don't have anything to say except for that sucks. Uh, well, I've been recording for quite a while now. I know that, uh, you guys said that you don't mind the longer videos, and personally, that's, that's good, because I kind of like making the longer videos, too. I think it gives a larger sample size of how the deck does, so let's take a look back at our match history. Um, I think I started recording around... You can see I've only been playing this warrior deck for a while. Uh, I think we started recording around the Pestilent. No, it was Zogmund, right? Because he was on Hualu. And that was that uh, that dragon deck. Then this was dragons. Then that was dragons. So yeah, we had one loss, four wins, two losses, four wins, one loss. So overall, more positive than negative. But that <laughs> that last match... Man, I just want to play with Gravesinger. It's it's not too much to ask. So that last match kind of took it out of me. Um, but it was good. It was a good rematch. That guy got to get his win in against me, and I got to win against him. So it's fine. Um, yeah. So that's another one of my singleton decks that I really, really love. I think when it works out, it really works. But when it doesn't, it kind of sucks. So you just have to 
measure the good with the bad. Unfortunately, we were not curving out at all today. It was a horrible showcase of what can happen with this deck, but it does win uh, more often than lose, generally. So I think that we had a pretty good sample size today, uh, especially getting a rematch with that guy. You know, It's not like you're going to win every time against a certain specific deck. Even if you played the same guy a hundred times, there's at least one time that that guy is going to beat you just because you might have a bad draw and they might have a better draw than you. So uh, you're never going to win 100% of your matches. That's something to always keep in mind. And that's something that I kind of lost sight of recently. I was trying to win too much for the channel. And uh, I'm, you know, I don't care. It's fine. Uh, it's, it's just a game at the end of the day. And I'm just happy to play it. And I'm happy that people are still invested enough to spend time to watch. So with that said, I don't think I'm going to have a better send off than that. I hope you guys all have a good Friday. I hope you guys all have a good rest of your weekend. And I will see you guys when I edit this in the comments section. So see you on the other side.